concerning her son. The fallout continues from Mark Chivarella's corruption trial. A federal jury convicted the former Luzerne County judge on 12 charges. Tonight we learn there will be a thorough investigation into some current employees in the Luzerne County Courthouse because of what was revealed at the trial. Well, Scott, Luzerne County's president judge says this is all about keeping people's confidence in courts. So an investigation has been started into two current Luzerne County workers. Mark Chivarella is now a convicted felon. During a federal trial in Scranton, he was found guilty of racketeering and other charges in connection with a kickback scheme connected to private juvenile detention centers. During the ex-judge's trial, there was testimony from one current Luzerne County court employee, Nick Callan, once a tip staff to former Judge Michael Conahan. On the stand, Callan told jurors he delivered packages to former Judge Conahan, but said he did not know what was inside them. Prosecutors say the packages contained money, and Conahan has pleaded guilty to racketeering. Callan now works as a tip staff to senior judges in Luzerne County. Prosecutors also mentioned another current Luzerne County court employee, a court stenographer, who they said took money from Conahan. That woman did not testify. Because of the information, Luzerne County's president judge has ordered an investigation into those employees. In a statement, he calls it, quote, a personnel matter to ascertain whether there is a basis for disciplinary action. Starting next month, Senior Judge Brendan Manston of Wyoming County will review the matter and then make a recommendation to court. And Judge Vanston's recommendation will be considered by the judges here in Luzerne County before a final decision is made on any possible disciplinary action. This is not a cash for kids case, and we hope somebody oh, starts kid, getting the my message. My kid's not here anymore. Yeah. My yeah. kid's not here. He's dead. He got some hands. He ruined my fucking life. I'd like him to go to hell and rot there forever. No, you know what he told everybody in court? They need to be held accountable for their actions. You need to be. Do you remember me? Do you remember me? Do you remember my son? An all-star wrestler? He's gone. He's gone to summon the heart. You scumbag. You ruined You still get your pension? Back now at 736 with what some are calling the biggest courthouse scandal in U.S. history. Two judges in Pennsylvania convicted in a so-called cash for kids scheme. And now one mother says her son died because one of those judges, because of one of those judges. We're going to talk to her in just a moment. But first, NBC's Jeff Rawson has the tales now. Hey, Jeff. Good morning. Hi, and good morning to you. That judge sent hundreds of kids to jail for minor crimes while taking kickbacks from the jail itself. This morning, he's been convicted along with another judge, but that wasn't enough for one of the victim's mothers who confronted him outside of court. The dramatic scene caught on tape. Sandy Fonzo couldn't hold back face to face with the judge, the man she blames for her son's death. Ed Kenzakovsky was only 17 years old, arrested 
for a minor drug crime, his first offense. Judge Michael Chivarella sentenced Ed to six months in a juvenile detention center, according to legal experts, an unusually strict punishment. He served the time, but his mother says he was never the same after he got out. Years later, Ed committed suicide. He was just a regular 17-year-old um, happy kid. You know, we had a regular, normal, happy life. Then that one incident that we had to go stand in front of that judge um, was a turning point. He shackled him, took him away, and, and that was the end. Prosecutors say Judge Chivarello was secretly cashing in as he sent kids to jail, taking kickbacks of nearly $1 million from the company that ran the jail. When Sandy Fonzo saw him after court, she let loose. The bottom line is that his greed took the life of my son. I don't think there's anything worse than what he could have done. The pain that he created and the lies and the deceit and everything behind it, uh, I mean, it just, it just makes me sick. Shivarella was convicted on 12 of 39 counts, including racketeering and money laundering. Plus, he has to return all the money. Absolutely never took a dime to send a kid anywhere. If that was the case, that would have been in this trial. You don't think the government would have put, that, put me on trial for that if that was the case? Never happened. Never, ever happened. He faces up to 157 years in prison, but this morning he's home with his family until sentencing. A freedom Sandy Fonzo finds outrageous. I know it won't bring my son back, but I want him, I just want an apology from him. I want him to say that he was wrong and that he is sorry. I just want him to admit his guilt, finally. Hmm. We called Chivarella and his lawyer about Sandy's accusations. They declined to comment. By the way, another judge, Michael Conahan, is also involved in this kickback scheme. He's pled guilty now to racketeering. Both could be sentenced in a matter of months. Anne. All right, Jeff Rossen, thank you so much. Sandy Fonzo is with us along with her attorney, Marsha Levitt. Good morning to both of you. Good morning. You were just watching that tape as we showed it, and it didn't seem as though yelling gave you any peace it, it you you are it's as if you're really in this knot of pain um i think I, I think it was good for me to um to be there at that moment and actually you know speak right to him and tell him right to his face the pain that he's created and what he's done uh to my son so maybe you know when everything calms down it'll feel like maybe a a layer has come off. I mean, I've, I've, this has been years and years of, and it's still, there's just no no closure to him. I, I just want to see him, you know, I want to see, I just want to see some justice. I want to see some justice for these kids, and, you know, I want to know my life's son was not in vain. My life's, my son's death was not in vain. You, more than perhaps anyone else, can really express how this sentence affected your son, how this judge's sentence affected your son. How would you describe it? He changed him. He, um, he, he ripped him out of our home, out of our life. He, he never looked into, you know, the whole picture of the kids. Like I said, he lined them up one by one and he sent them away, shackled them, um, sent them to places that, you know, God knows what went on. And then he throws them back. And, and how does a kid deal with that? You know, my son just never recovered from it, no matter what we did. He just, he just never would, would let him go. He just, it just kept snowballing and snowballing. And I have to ask, you know, you know that suicide is a very complicated thing. There are a lot of factors. Were there other factors that led to your son's committing suicide? Uh, he, I mean, it was, his, it was like his spirit was no longer, um, was no, he didn't, he, he wasn't the same kid. He didn't have all that, you know, that energy. He was just, he was depressed. He was sad. He was, um, so you saw no other factors that may have contributed? No, it just, it just kept going. He, no. he lost his freedom. Um, he kept, he, he was locked up. He was, he was fine until he got him again. And then he, um, he, uh, I, it just kept going downhill that's all he just he just never could recover and it was just uh you know even when he did hear that you know Chivarella was indicted and that this was you know all he mom it, it'll you know it'll never happen he'll never go to jail he'll never pay for what he did and um I think he just he just lost hope he just and you know and he started drinking and you know so all of that played a role in that one devastating night um 
I don't know, but that was that was the only thing bad that ever happened in his life, you know, and it, it's the only thing that ever had any kind of significance on changing his whole personality and his whole um, his whole outlook on, on life and his, mm -hmm. I don't know, it just seemed like he lost hope, he lost mm -hmm. faith, he, you know, he believed that there was no, no justice, there was no, you know, he was the bad one, you know, these, this judge, I, I want these kids to all know that they were not the bad ones, you know, that he's the bad guy. He was in... Marshall, what do you hope to get for these children? You've, you've filed suit on their behalf. We filed suit on their behalf, and we have worked to expunge their records, to reverse their convictions. And I think that really Sandy Sun's story typifies what happened to so many of the children in Luzerne County, thousands of children who were pulled before Chivarella for very, very trivial misconduct, joyriding, possession of drug paraphernalia, uh, minor harassment kinds of charges, shoplifting. They appeared without lawyers. They were, they had hearings that lasted two or three minutes. They were handcuffed and shackled and let off to placements. And I think that the story of Sandy's son is, is tragic in ways that none of us can even imagine. But the kind of trauma that all of the kids and families experienced up there as a consequence of the corruption and criminality that was ongoing and this widespread violation of children's constitutional rights is just really extraordinary. When you talk about wanting an apology, Sandy, it's hard to even imagine <clears throat> how that might affect you if that's enough for you. Yeah. No, I, um, I, don't, I, I could never forgive him. I mean, my son is gone. He, he, I'll never have him back. Um, but for him to just finally admit his guilt and stand up there and just say, I'm sorry, and I'm sorry to all these people, and that I was wrong, and, you know, give these kids a, a little bit of healing and a little bit of, you know, faith in, the, in our system that, you know, the right sometimes can be done, and that they are not, you know, this, these kids, the stories that I'm getting, they're just, they're just horrifying, and... Um, they, you know, they need help. They need help. In all your loss, you know, clearly you're speaking so forthrightly about your son. His life mattered. Yes. You've made that very clear today. Thank you. Thank you so much for Thank being you. here. Thank you so much, Marsha, for being here today.